Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. Where's your witness? In the evidence. That's hearsay. It's notarized. I still say it's hearsay. She's fair. You gotta help these young men learn how to do this the right way. Yes, Your Honor. She's firm. Can I say something, Your Honor? No, okay. I don't need to say anything else. She's honest. I'm not your child and I'm not your friend. That's the order of the court. Goodbye. This is Justice with Judge Maybelline. All rise. All parties raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, I do. do. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you, Will. You may be seated. In the matter of Margaret and Darren Knox versus Carolyn Knox, this is a family matter. The parents are suing the daughter for $1,500 matchmaking fees because there wasn't a wedding. The daughter says, I never asked for a matchmaker. Are you all serious about this for real? Well, we're from a traditional conservative community and it's not unusual for the parents to actually get involved with the, daughter, the children's weddings. Not and unusual for any family to get involved with the wedding, but we're talking about the marriage. Cause you paid for matchmaking fees, right? Yes, okay. we did, we paid for the fees. Mm -hmm. Thought it was better than the internet or other ways, and um, she ended up agreeing. And we got a list of 20 eligible people. My daughter came to me and asked me for my help, getting our help to get our, to find her a spouse. She was ready and she wanted somebody with similar backgrounds and similar values. We both belong to the same church. Um, we've been married 35 years. She is our only daughter, and we were hoping that she would have the same joy that we have had with having her. So she asked you to help her find a husband? She did. Is that right? No. Okay. Well, Your Honor, actually, and you're from a traditional family. But actually, you know, she, she tried on her own for many years. She couldn't really find someone. She did come to us and asked to help her find, you know, a husband. She came to you, said, help me find a husband, instead of you saying, let us help you find a spouse, because you have been single for many years, and we think you're too old now, and you ought to be married, and we're a traditional family, and you're not married. It didn't go down like that, that you suggested that perhaps... You know, she'd been single too long and it was time for her to be married? Probably a little bit of both. Okay. I'm so glad you were honest about that. That's probably the way it went down, huh? Yeah. A little bit of both. You are a traditional family. She's what, 27? I'm 23. 23. So you think people should be, children should be married by what age in traditional values? Well, all of her friends and everybody that she knows, that she grew up with here mm -hmm. in Selma, they all were married by the time they're 21. Okay, and so she's a little bit over her time. She, she is, and, and you know, we want to have grandchildren, you know, before we get too old. And we want her to have a family and really fit into the community better. So you, so not only were you trying to talk about marriage, you, you tell her she got to have babies too. Well, yes, that's, okay. what's, that's what's involved. That's what you want, grandchildren and fit into the community. What do you mean by that, fit into the community? Well, all of our friends and neighbors, they all have, you know, their kids all have Kids, they have grandkids, they even have great grandkids, some of them. And you feel left out. I do. Okay. So we you both want, do. So you wanted to help her find a spouse. All right, so what, what was your solution to this? We got a matchmaker in the community that everybody had used, and they gave us 20 men to, for her to check out the profiles that seemed acceptable, and with her, all the three of us found 10 people that we actually... So you narrowed it to 10. Narrowed it to 10, but mm -hmm. then we even narrowed it down to five, mm -hmm. for which she went on several dates in order to get to know the people. In the end, she came down to two gentlemen that she came to us that she liked very much and had potential to be spouses. One was Kyle and one was Thomas. Mm -hmm. And she said she, had a, she felt strongly for Kyle and she asked us who we felt strongly for, and we both actually preferred Thomas. We did. Uh-oh, so now you're at an impasse. You well, she, asked us, she asked us for advice. Right. And then she went ahead and, and stuck with Kyle. Well, because she asked you for advice and said, maybe that's why she wanted to know, to, to know to make sure she did the opposite of what you said. <laughs> so maybe that was the reason why she wanted to know. Which one do they like the best? Oh, that's the one I can't marry because they love him too much. You don't know why she asked you for advice now. So you said Thomas, she said Kyle. And you, you all paid $1,500 to this 
community matchmaker. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what did the community matchmaker guarantee in this fifteen hundred dollars? Or was there any guarantee made? Guarantee to marriage. And were all these twenty men from the same from the community as well? Yes. So you got twenty unmarried men within the community. And when you say the community is the neighborhood or the city or the county or what? I say the city area and also the values that we have, the church that we have. What are your traditional to? values in church? Tell me about it. Um, we just believe in marriage, uh, children, um, you know, honesty, Christian, religion. Okay. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. Just everything about him was nice at first. At first. Once we got engaged, it was almost like he removed a mask. We're back with the case of Darren and Margaret Knox, who are suing their daughter, Caroline Knox, for $1,500. So she didn't marry Kyle. And now you want your $1,500 back. Well, what happened was at the end with Kyle, she, she actually got engaged. And after she got engaged, we even gave them um, a, you know, a set of china uh, to help their family get started. And um, they, they set a date for the wedding. We even bought tickets for them for their honeymoon. Oh, mm -hmm. where, were they, where were you sending them to? Uh, Miami. Okay. And, uh, you know, and literally, you know, Two months before the wedding, she just called it off. And she's sitting over here so nonchalant, like, I'm so sick of this, I don't know what to do. So let me turn to you and find out why you called this wedding off, or let me just get your whole story on this. Yes, Your Honor. You're 23. I got yes, that Your much. Honor. Unmarried. Yes. All your friends are married. Everybody you went to school with, your close friends, they're married. Yes. You're left out, making the family feel left out. Yes. So what's been the atmosphere in your family because of the fact that you're unmarried? So I grew up very conservative and Christian. And so the older I got, the more it was kind of pushing, you know, oh, so-and-so is your friend. They got married, you know, and it just felt very pushy. And so I asked them for advice, not a matchmaker. I asked for advice because I really needed just some guidance in it because every man that I went on a date with, they just, I just didn't feel like I matched with them. And so I asked just for some advice, you know, what should I do over here and everything. And they decided to get a matchmaker and they were just ecstatic about it. And I just went along with it for the time being. And then when I started to get engaged with Kyle and everything, I just realized like, I'm not actually happy, and so I just didn't want to. I didn't want to do How it. How did you narrow it down to two, Thomas and Kyle? Um, I went on a bunch of dates, like every single night. It was like date after date after date, and um, Thomas and Kyle both they were funny, and they had a nice sense of humor. So that was kind of something that we clicked with, and you know they were good animal lovers and everything else. So. They were kind of the two that I meshed with the best, but I did like Kyle over Thomas, but... And why was that? Um, he just kind of like clicked with me. Like, he was funny, he was caring, he was loving, he was kind. Just everything about him was nice at first. At first? Yes, and what at does first. at first mean? Uh, the first few months that I was dating him, uh, once we got engaged, it was almost like he removed a mask. And what did he start to do after the engagement? Um, he just he just wasn't who I thought he was. His humor changed. That's not changed. telling me anything. You've got to give me some facts. His humor changed. Um, he started to just kind of be weird about things. Like I would ask him, hey, can we go, you know, do such and such? Like, let's go get ice cream. Let's go watch a movie or something. And like he started leaning towards, oh, well, I'm working late and everything else. But he was never working late before we got engaged. It started once we got engaged, and I realized that he's just not a man that I can love genuinely. And so I don't want to be forced to marry somebody that I don't love. What are you looking for? Tell me who you are. Um, well, I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I graduated from University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. I have a dog. Mm -hmm. I like to go hiking. I like to go on long walks and stuff. I love watching TV. I do believe in my faith, but I'm not as strong about it as my parents are, and I think that's really where 
the Kyle situation started to take a turn is because I'm not as strong in the faith. I have learned, like, I've had, I've been stabbed in the back too many times. There's differences in, in the faith. There's some tenets of the faith that you don't believe in. Like yes. what? For instance, uh, Kyle does not believe in abortion of any sort. And I, quite frankly, don't know if I can have kids. And if I do get pregnant, it could be a very serious, serious problem. It could cause really bad health issues. And he was like, no, no abortion no whatsoever. And so if something slips up like that where I did end up getting pregnant and my health was at risk, he, he was like super, super against the abortion thing and everything. But like my health comes first in that situation. Is there something wrong with your health now? No, I just, I... Do you believe, why do you believe you may have problems if you were to get pregnant? Uh, my pelvic bone is not shaped the way it's supposed to be for that, so... Could be some issues. Yes. All right? Yes. And uh, what else? He's very strong in the faith of uh, no divorce, and my, my parents are as well, and that's another reason why I... I decided not to marry him because if something were to go wrong and like we don't love each other in the end, I want to be able to get out. And he told me pretty much to my face, if you decide that you want a divorce, I'm not filing the paperwork. I'm not signing the paperwork. But he doesn't have to sign any paperwork. That's not the way divorce works. Well, he, he told me like I was, I was stuck with him and my parents would probably shut me out if I divorced him. And so I just think it's better for me to not marry him. I want to. But your parents would probably shut you off if you divorce anybody. Mm hmm. Coming up. It's not really a fear of like marriage because of them. It's just the community that I grew up in. It's like everybody that got divorced, it was you're shunned, you're out. We're back with the case of Darren and Margaret Knox, who are suing their daughter, Caroline Knox, for $1,500. So you're just scared to get married? Yes. You're afraid. You have all the negatives that could happen if you were to get married. Yes. What did you see happen in your parents' relationship that you haven't told them about that causes you some fear of marriage? Um, it's not really a fear of like marriage because of them. It's just the community that I grew up in. It's like everybody that got divorced, it was, you're shunned, you're out. And it just, I, it's very hypocritical. There were a lot of divorces? No, but the ones that were divorced, it was it was a big deal. So you're going into marriage thinking about it may end in divorce. Well, as opposed I'm... to thinking about how do I make sure that the marriage doesn't end in divorce and that it works. Your parents have been married 35 years. You didn't ask them for some advice on that? What kept you all together? Why are you, why are you still married so long? Right. So I did ask them that. Um, and, you know, they told me, oh, well, it was hard and whatever. But they met in the church and they did start to love each other before they even got married. And I don't want to jump into a marriage when I don't even love the person right now. I just needed some guidance as to how to start to get somewhere, not, you know, four months after meeting someone, get engaged and get married. That wasn't ever what I wanted. I just wanted some guidance. I don't want to be forced. Okay, so you're feeling forced to marry. You, and you think she should pay you back? I do. I think she should take responsibility for her actions. You know, she has rebelled a lot. She does do things her own way. She got her nose pierced at a time that we didn't when she was younger and we didn't think she should get her nose pierced and she's strong-willed and but she said she wanted to get married like her friends and start her own family and that's what she said to us. Well, she, she, you gave her the help. Yeah, we did. She went out on the dates. Yeah. She tried it. It didn't work. Coming up. I think she needs counseling because I don't know what's going on but there's a fear there that's blocking relationships. We're back with the case of Darren and Margaret Knox, who are suing their daughter, Caroline Knox, for $1,500. So now you think she just should marry him because you pay this money for a matchmaking service and she narrowed it down to one and he asked her to marry him, they had an engagement, so she should just go on and marry him? Well, the deal was that she wanted to get married, so she did find the person that she no, thought. No, she found a person that she thought of all the people that she went through that she thought yes. was the person. Yes, and it took us, a, it takes every marriage a long time. I mean, we fell in love slowly, but we stayed married through good and bad times from 21 on. We met young and 
We're delighted to have this wonderful daughter, and I'd love her to have her own family. And she said, she, as her friends are having their own family, she said she wanted to have her own family. I'm going to tell you, everybody is not meant to get married, even if they want to be married. It's not going to always happen your way. You're trying to make your child conform to what you want her to be. And she's already shown you that's not who I am and that's not what I want. She got her nose pierced, you said, right? She's already told you this is not who I am. You're trying to keep her in a box. And fortunately, or unfortunately, she doesn't have the strength to just break out the box altogether. But she does little things to let you know this is not my box. I think she needs counseling because I don't know what's going on, but there's a fear there that's blocking relationships. And one of the main things is she doesn't know what she wants herself. When a person is ready to be married and know what they want in a marriage, they could rattle it off like this and know what they're looking for. She's not ready. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. We all teach our children certain things and we raise them in certain, with certain values and beliefs and ideas and we would want them to follow that. But I have learned the hard way because unlike your child who just acts it out, mine speaks it out, mama, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I don't like this and I don't like that and da 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 and she mouthy like me oh my god <laughs> so I have to learn to just back up you know mommy let me live my life the way I want to live my life I'm going to get do this I'm going to do that don't give her a, I see you rolling your eye at her don't you do that don't do that mama that was cool. no mm -mm. I was feeling more love for her to tell you the truth hmm? I was actually feeling more love for her yeah. I wasn't rolling my eyes. Okay. You, you yeah. know, she's all right. She's all right. You love your parents? Mm hmm But you want them to leave you alone about that marriage situation, huh? Yes. Just leave me alone. Please. <laughs> Take that discussion off the table and talk about something else, all right? Thank you. Judge me for the defendant. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The co-plaintiff's claim has been denied. I love you no matter what, Caroline, and I'm proud of whatever you do. And sorry if I give you any harm, but it was the right reasons that I was trying. It's okay. I just hope you guys let off a little. 